Okay, we're going to begin our unit on relationships within triangles. We've talked about triangles and triangle congruence. We'll look more in depth at some of the relationships that are found within different types of triangles. So first we're going to talk about perpendicular bisectors and then we'll discuss what is known as the circumcenter. So as we talked about a perpendicular bisector, we've learned, well, uh, what a perpendicular line is. We also know what a bisector is where it splits the line into two equal parts. So line CP here is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB because it forms a perpendicular line and then AP is congruent to PB. So what do we notice about point C? Well, C, it appears, is equal distance from points A and point B. So the question is, why is AC congruent to CB? How do we know that? Let's take what we've learned about triangles, and as you can see, we have two different triangles there. We have triangle CAP and triangle CBP. So if triangle CAP is congruent to triangle CBP, uh, then we know that the corresponding parts have to be congruent. So let's look a little bit more in depth as to why we can say that triangle CAP is congruent to triangle CBP. Well, first of all, if it's a perpendicular bisector, we know this angle is 90 degrees and this angle would be 90 degrees. And since it's a bisector, AP is congruent to BP. So you have an angle and a side congruent to each other. We know CP is in both triangles. So by the reflexive property, they also share a side. So we have side, angle, side congruence. And since those triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, um, Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent. So line AC would be congruent to line CB. And no matter where I go, if I were to choose a point down here, it would be congruent to either side, A or B, because I'm forming a congruent triangle. Since these two segments are the same, we have a shared segment here, and it's a 90 degree angle. So no matter where I go along this perpendicular bisector, if I were to go way up here along the line, it would be equal distant from A or B. That's the first thing we're going to want to write down into our notes. So the perpendicular bisector theorem. In a plane, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And it's proven by, well, side angle side congruence like we showed earlier. So in this example, CA would be congruent to segment CB. And then the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. In a plane, if a point is equidistant, like in this case D, is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it would be, have to be on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. That's the only way that it would work. And so in our case, if DA is equal to DB, DA is equal to DB, then D lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB. Just abbreviate here. Okay, so make sure you get that down into your notes. It's an important thing we'll be talking about in this lesson today. So let's apply the perpendicular bisector theorem. So right now BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. So I know I've got a right angle here, and BC is congruent to AB. I want to find a segment AD. Well, I know AD is 5x, and I know AD would have to be congruent to CD since uh, BD is the perpendicular bisector. So I know side CD will be equal to side AD. So by substitution, I can put 3x plus 14 in for CD, and I can put 5x in for AD. So now I can solve this equation, I subtract 3x from both sides, and I've got 14 equal to 2x, and I can divide both sides now by 2, so x will equal 7. But that's not what the question is asking. Question 1 is AD. Well, AD is 5x, so AD equals 5 times 7, which would be a length of 35 units. Okay.
take a look at the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So Wx is the perpendicular bisector of Yz. Uh, so what segment lengths in the diagram are equal? Well, if Wx is the perpendicular bisector, I know Yx is congruent to Xz. So Yx equals Xz. What else would I know? Well, I would know that Yw would equal ZW. Now the question is, is V on the line Y or WX? If I were to extend that line, would it go through V? Well, it appears that it does, but we can't trust our diagrams. So let's take what we know. Well, we know YV is 25 and VZ is 25. And according to the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So this point is equidistant from both endpoints, therefore V is on WX. So in answer to question B, we would say yes, it is. Okay, uh, so now let's take a look at perpendicular bisectors within a triangle. We're going to go to GeoGebra and do some exploration for a second here. Okay, so I've plotted a couple different triangles on GeoGebra. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the perpendicular bisectors of those uh, segments of each triangle. And we're going to take a look at what happens. So if I create the perpendicular bisector of each side of a triangle, I notice that they seem to intersect in one point, point M for triangle ABC. Okay, so let's try with another triangle, triangle GHI. Create the perpendicular bisectors. And notice that one meets in the same, in one spot as well. well both of these triangles, you can tell, are right triangles. So maybe it just works for right triangles. So let's find the perpendicular bisector of an acute isosceles triangle. Those two lines meet. If I create the perpendicular line bisector of the third side, I see that it meets as well in one spot. And if we try that again with an obtuse triangle, I've got a lot of different lines here, it's hard to see, but we can see that um, those meet as well. And I'm just going to clear off some of these lines so we can see a little bit clearer. Okay, so we can see now in this obtuse triangle that the perpendicular bisectors meet outside of the triangle there. And then if I clear those lines off, uh, we can take a look at what's going on a little bit better now. So uh, what happens is, what we call this is a point of concurrency. Point M, N, O, and P are all points of concurrency with each of the triangles. So since all three lines of those perpendicular bisectors meet in one point, we call that a point of concurrency because all the lines meet in one spot. So I guess the question is, what's the point of this point? Uh, what's the point of concurrency have to do with the triangle? So all those perpendicular bisectors end up meeting in one spot. They all have one point of intersection. And what's the connection there? Well, if we take our circle and start, it's the wrong tool there, uh, start on the point of concurrency and head out to one of the segments or one of the points of the triangle, vertices of the triangle, Notice I circle the whole triangle up, and this is pretty cool. I've got this point of concurrency that no matter where I go, if I draw a circle to any of the vertices of the triangle, all those vertices are on the circle. And so that's kind of a cool connection uh, with the perpendicular bisectors, is when I have all those perpendicular bisectors drawn, and they meet at this one point, they are now all equal distant from the vertices. Um, so if I have a triangle now, no matter what kind of triangle, 
If I draw the perpendicular bisectors in, they're going to meet at this point that is equal distant from any other point. That has a whole lot of application um, when we're talking about three locations and you're trying to find a point that's equal distant from all three of those. And you know we'll apply that in one of our examples coming up here. But this is known as the circumcenter. Uh, the circle goes around the triangle. And where those points meet, uh, this is known as the circumcenter uh, because this is the circumscribed circle. Uh, the triangle is within this circle, and the center of the circle is known as the circumcenter. Okay? So the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, uh, as I mentioned, we saw in GeoGebra, the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that's equal distant from the vertices of the triangle. So point P, uh, that is known as our circumcenter. And because it's the circumcenter, I know that this point will be equal distant from every other vertice on the triangle. And I could draw a circle uh, around that triangle. See if we can draw a circle here. There we go. Undo. Let's try that again. Get my circle. And there we go. So our circumcenter will be right there at point P. And because it's the circumcenter, it is equal distant from all the vertices. So PB is congruent to PA, which is congruent to PC. And kind of sketch in all the other details. So since it's perpendic since we're talking about perpendicular bisectors, I know BD is congruent to AD, that's a right angle. And then the perpendicular bisector of BC would be here. The perpendicular bisector of AC would be there. So we have a lot of information that we can tell within this triangle when all the perpendicular bisectors meet. As I told you, here's an example of where we might use this. If we have three snack carts selling frozen yogurt from points A, B, and C, uh, just outside a city, each of the three carts is the same distance from the frozen yogurt distributor. So how would we find a location for this distributor that would be equal distant? from the three carts. Well, notice we have three points, we've got ourselves a triangle. And if we've got a triangle, if we want a point that's equal distant, we'd have to get our perpendicular bisector. So I'll just kind of sketch an idea here. We've got a perpendicular line about at the midpoint. And here's the midpoint. Draw a perpendicular line. And the midpoint. Okay. So if that were the case, and we had our perpendicular bisectors all meeting here at the circumcenter, this would be the spot in which we would have all points equal distant from the yogurt distributor to the snack shop. And many different examples of how it's used, whether it's you know a cell phone reaching to three cities in equal distance or whatever the case might be but you know here's an example of you know where uh, this point of concurrency is useful so we talked about what a perpendicular bisector is and what a circumcenter is uh, you'll apply that in some work that you do today